Okay, so I'm going to show you uh, how I made this necklace, or at least pretty close to how I did it. So, um, first you need to start out with your basic clay that you've picked out. Um, whatever color you want to use, it doesn't really matter if you want to go realistic, if you want to go fantasy, crap. Here's one of my eyeballs. Rid of the other. There it is. But keep in mind the size of your frame. Um, so you want to try to keep it somewhere within it. I mean, it's great that it goes everywhere, but I always worry about tentacles breaking, arms breaking. So that's a pretty good size. Yeah. So it's best to determine about the size you want for your octopus tent head. Make more or less eight identical uh, arms. Obviously these are huge, um, they all are going to get trimmed. I just try to do them more or less the same size because it helps with trying to get them a little more evenly uh, distributed. I'm not going to do a really complex set of octopus parts that I do when I do really realistic ones because it takes between six and eight hours to do a full one. Eventually, if people actually start watching these and subscribing, uh, I'll probably do a full octopus. But for now, I'm just going to do the clicky version, even though it's not very quick. Well, if you want to do a good job. So as you can see, they, they don't have to be exactly the same length. Uh, you can get thinner, but at least jewelry, you never want to go to, unless you're using metal, um, but with polymer clay. Uh, always remember that you're going to be wearing it. It's going to receive some form of impact, especially if the person or yourself wants to wear it a lot. You've got to remember it is, it's not a painting on a wall. It's, it's function, sort of. Tentacles, much like snakes, aren't really all that round. At least not round like it came out of an extruder. Okay, so that's a nice shape. And I love texture. If you do not love texture, you don't have to texture your step. You can use a plate, you can use... Um, other tools. I like this one. Uh, I have quite the collection of just weird little tools that give neat shapes. Since we're going to be handling it a lot, it's not a bad idea to do deeper texture because it's going to get removed somewhat. Okay. So, we got a smooth texture got some neat shape to it. It's already looking a little more alive. If you look at it, and then we do a nice trim. At this point you want to add the suckers, that's fine. Um, I try to get it all done at once. Sorry, I'm trying to get it close to the camera. Really wish this thing had like a light or something that shone kind of where they was projecting.
it's much easier to fix mistakes early on. So if you cut something weird, or the texture is weird, or the size is weird, get rid of it now. Just do it over. One's way too big, one's way too small. Just purge it and start over. The other nice thing is, um, when you push down like this, it does lengthen it a bit. So if you're worried about it being a little, a little short, this does even out the size and uh, increase the length. The thing people really like about octopuses is their crazy long tentacles. I mean, there's the cute ones with the little, I think they're called Dumbo squid or something, Dumbo octopus. And they're very cute, and they have cute little stubby tentacles. But in general, people like the old whippy tentacles. They're what's really interesting about them as animals. I mean, if you took away the tentacles, they're just a bag with eyes. They're just jellyfish that can see. This is another place where these come in really handy. Uh, I have a bunch more, but I don't know where they are. I think they're in my polymer or my PMC kit. But they already have pre-built in sides. You could use, I don't know, things like um, pen tips, but they're more dome shaped and these are really round and they give you that really nice uh, indent. Usually I'll go along till I start running out of the shiny pit. I don't usually worry too much about the very, very tippy tips because especially with the um, jewelry, you end up kind of curling them in to protect them. I think they look neat. Oh, that looks nice. Right? But if you're doing a bigger octopus and you want really, there's a really strong gradient between the sizes of the, is this smaller or bigger? I think they're the same. But if you want really strong results, I recommend getting the nail dotting tools uh, because there's much bigger and much smaller ones. Technically, you don't have to go far that far back with the spots, holes, but um, I like to. I think I'm going to stop on the big ones though, just because. They take up less time and resources. Yeah, you can see this one's already a lot bigger. Well, that's fine. 
It can be trimmed if it doesn't look good. I think the most worst part about tentacles is you do all this work detailing them. And then half of it's hidden, and the other half you have to trim off. Because it's the wrong size. Actually, let me do something with that. So I just finished all the octopus tentacles off. Just rewatch the same thing if you want more. It's the same thing. <laughs> okay, so they're all kind of huge, especially for our head. Um, as you can see, that'd be much, much bigger. Um, it's a bit too big for the frame, so I'm going to trim them back, which I almost always end up doing. It's not really that surprising. Like I said, you put a lot of work into these things, and then you just hack it off, and the other half isn't even seen. But, with tentacles, you want them all going crazy everywhere, and uh, so if you can get that hint in the back of the tentacles, or the suckers, uh, it really sells the look. No, it's not Oop. First comes worst, you just make some new ones. Okay, that's looking better. Sorry for the noise, my um, toaster oven is on because I wanted to cook the uh, frame so it would be ready uh, by the time, theoretically, we start arranging everything. Alright, so I'm going to do the head. I'm going to base it off this one. Octopuses don't usually, I mean, they're amorphic, they squish all around, but they have a general base look. It's not round, it's much more of a, a teardrop, see, teardrop, and, and um, obviously there's, there's many different species, so they often end up looking pretty different. If you want to base it off a specific species, that's a great idea. Uh, but generic octopus, the uh, it narrows where the eyes are placed. So right now I am working on something for all the tentacles to attach to. Kind of like a bib or a skirt. You'd be surprised, but it's actually fairly hard to find really good pictures of octopuses. A lot of drawings, and they're not always that that accurate. I mean, they show octopuses, but their arms are always in the way, or they're all over the place, and it's hard to really get a good concept of octopus anatomy. I guess I should just buy one from a restaurant or something, but... Okay. That part's not that important. It's going to get trimmed and moved. The nice skull shape is, see how round that is? No good. Let's put you back. There we go. Much more interesting shape. There's not a lot of super round stuff in nature. The only thing that's really super round is probably some of your ball joints in your body. But you don't see that. Not walking around. So you don't want to really do that much in your art, unless that's something what you're trying to go for. But if you're not trying to go for it, uh, it's a big factor in a lot of people's things looking plasticky. And um, I like to do uh, loops, drag loops. This is more noticeable on the big ones, but uh, you have such a small space to work with. 
you don't have to use this tool. I have some other tools that I use for fine lines. And you know, I wiggle them as I go. Make it more interesting. Okay, so I've completely done loops. And then I want to do kind of a counter dragged line. Okay, and then rub it out with your hands, just gently. If you want to use mineral oil and a brush, that's not a bad idea. I don't use it much for these things because once the mineral oil is on there, it does not come off it quickly and it, you can't really do the mica powder. So. And that knocked down a lot of the detail, but I want to add some back. You want to add on as much as you take off. Well, not as much. But just keep taking and then keep adding. Because you want to be able to have high points for the... Uh, well, you can use paint, but the powder to stick to. Make it more interesting. Yeah, I really prefer the, uh, the ball tip tools as far as they need to leave a nice edge. They kind of bevel it while they go. Alright, heads this small isn't super important. Uh, I think at this point I'll add on the vents. These usually get covered up in such a tight spot, but they're fun to have. I don't put too much work into them when they're this small, but octopus have little, I guess they're breathing vents, circulation vents, but I just add a little down here. If you look at um, old Japanese art, they treat them like they're the mouths, not the beak part. You'll see it in like the uh, Super Mario Brothers art, some other older stuff, historical art. Yeah, it's hard to get a good picture of where these are on the animal. I think there's different positions for different one species, I don't know. But, they're there. Okay, the eyeballs. You can use cooler glass ones, I just picked these, because why not? I got a lot of them. They're a good size. Um, this small it's not a bad idea to work towards bigger rather than smaller otherwise uh, people can't necessarily see it it's kind of like why cartoons have oversized hands or knives it, it reads better even though it's not very realistic so I'm going to put them more towards the top. Ooh, pop tarts are done.
I don't know if music's better or not to put in this part. Or just me talking. I usually put the video tutorials I watch on mute. Usually because it's just music. So blending it in. A little bit of an exaggerated eye shape, but it's fun at this size. So, the bane of my existence is getting eyeballs to match. I'm terrible at it. And let's see, how am I doing? Not great. Thank God it's not a puppy. She needs to look cute. I think that's why I don't do cute animals. Cutest thing I ever did was a deep sea angler. It was pretty cute though. Or a deep sea angler. Okay, so it's not bad. This clay is fairly soft, so I'm losing a lot of the detail just through handling it. pretty good. Do they read like eyes? Do they read like they match? That's better. Not perfect, but better. Alright. Now we get to the octopus part. The tentacle part. Alright, I'm going for my longest tentacles. 
splash biggest, whatever, doesn't matter, bigger than the smaller ones, and I squeeze down the trimmed part till it's fairly thin and narrow. Squishing it down a little, but not much, because there's a very strong chance I'm going to have to move it again. Might be a little bit, but I think it should be okay. Okay, so this is why you wanted to save your clay and why you wanted extra. So we're gonna smooth these in. And it's not a bad idea to have a little scoopy one. If you have a scoop, I made this one, so I gotta. I can't really tell you where to get them. You could skip this and just make this part thinner, I guess, or um, just leave it how it is. It's just me being nitpicky. There's really anything wrong with evil spaghetti. Ugh, oh, finally. Freaking finally. There. Right. Blend it all back in. I like to try to keep those channels. And then pull that in.
the most fun part. Setting the tentacles. I really like this part. I think it's probably the most fun. It's just coming up. It is an artful. Let's see this way of packing the tentacles in. Yeah, it's big. Shoot. Oh well. Bigger is better for tutorials anyway. Especially since I don't have the right kind of camera or lens to uh, have you watch me do it much smaller. So you don't want them, the curls to be perfect. Uh, if you look at actual octopuses, they bend all sorts of ways. They don't just make circles. You can even have them interacting with each other. That's cool. But I'm trying at all points to keep the very tips um, protected by the larger body. See, that's in, that's in. Just trying to keep them in. Because it's jewelry. If it was uh, just in resin, now nah, I'd go crazy. These things are, these are for uh, mica powders and makeup and everything. They're so wonderfully holographic. Uh, Surreal makeup actually does have a real holographic one, but it's more of a silver holographic, if that makes sense. And I haven't found the perfect use for it yet. I like it. I own, I own two things of it, but I don't know what to do with it yet. I don't like that too matchy matchy. There we go. I like that. Well, shoot, let me pull that over. There you go. I'm gonna bake it. Um, nobody really seemed interested in the actual resin part, so I'm not gonna bother showing how I do that unless somebody would like to see it. But I think it's pretty cool. All right. Thank you.